Voices of CFMA, Construction Financial Management Association's podcast featuring conversations with our members. I'm your host, Kate Platt, CFMA's Marketing Manager. September is Suicide Prevention Month, and this month I'm joined by Tracy Finolio, CPA and CCIFP from Schaubmerg, Illinois. She has served in many CFMA leadership roles and is currently a member of the Leadership Development Committee and chairs its database task force. She is also the treasurer of the Construction Industry Alliance for Suicide Prevention and is an active member of CFMA's suicide prevention efforts. Thanks for joining me, Tracy. Let's get into this uh, and start with, how did you get into this line of work? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Kate, and allowing me to talk about this important topic a little bit. Of course. And I actually, I entered the world of construction quite by chance. I had been in manufacturing for my entire professional life and was the controller for a family-owned sheet metal company at the time. Because of the close family environment, I knew my boss's husband very well. And when we made the decision to sell the sheet metal company, it just so happened that he was looking for a controller. Between both companies, I was with the family for 18 years and was really able to spread my wings and learn a lot working so closely with the owners. So I guess you can say that the stars aligned and there began my career in construction financial management. That's awesome. That's really a great journey through through a a family business and then it just keeps continuing. Yep. So what brought you to CFMA? Well, as I mentioned, I knew the owner of my first construction employer before I went to work with him. And he had introduced me to his controller not long after I went to work for his wife's company. So the controller and I over there had an informal peer group relationship and we would discuss things, you know, related to general accounting, like sales tax and things like that. So I actually knew her pretty well. And when I started in construction, she recommended that I join CFMA. And she said, even if only for the Building Profits magazine. So I did join. And for several years, I was what I like to call a magazine member, not really taking advantage of everything else that that CFMA and my chapter had to offer. But when I became interested in the CCIFP exam, I attended a review session and I connected with some of the local folks. Before long, they asked me to be on the board and there began my CFMA journey and I haven't looked back since. That's amazing that you got support early on from your company and, you know, that they really wanted you to succeed like that. Yeah, they sure did. They were, uh, you know, really invested in their people and letting them, um, you know, develop professionally and personally. So at the top of this episode, we did mention that September is Suicide Prevention Month, and you are very involved with all of these efforts. Can you share with us why it's so important um, to discuss suicide prevention as it relates to the construction industry? Of course, you know, this is such a pressing issue for the industry and mental health and suicide prevention needs to be integrated into our health and safety programs. The industry has ranked higher than many other industries for death by suicide for quite some time. And in the CDC November 2018 report, the combined construction and extraction industries unfortunately moved into the number one ranking spot. Construction worker suicide rates also exceed other construction fatalities by other causes. Within the industry, statistics show that certain groups are also more at risk, like structural iron and steel workers, brick masons, roofers, and laborers. Men, especially white men in their early 20s through their 50s, account for the bulk of suicides across all industries, and construction demographics overlap heavily with that risk group. However, it's really important to remember that anyone in the industry is at risk, even those not directly involved in the construction process. And you mentioned some risk factors. What are some of the more specific ones for the construction industry? Well, as a predominantly male-dominated industry, there's a strong tough guy culture, and many workers are not willing to reach out for help. Many of the other factors can either be isolated, or as I kind of go through the list of factors, you'll see where they can actually be interrelated and build on each other. So there can be a lot of isolation and separation if they're traveling to job sites, they're away from their family, they're away from their friends, and just the stress of moving back and forth, you know, over a period of a couple of weeks to job sites and never having that stability. Um, they also face a lack of work stability and are often subject to seasonal layoffs or just uh, cyclical layoffs within our industry. 
They can suffer chronic pain issues from many years of labor intensive work. This can lead to drug and alcohol abuse, um, you know, specifically because of the pain issue, but that can also be an issue because of the other factors. Um, again, to sleep problems can be related to some of these other things going on. And on the job site, they have a high pressure to meet schedule. Um, you know, they're, they're coordinating with a lot of uh, other industries. They aren't always in control of everything. And then many workers are also veterans and they may be dealing with issues, you know, from their time of service and just kind of the, their mentality and their work ethic towards their job performance can lead to risk factors for them as well. In addition to that, employees may also lack awareness of behavioral health services that are available to them, or they might be reluctant to use them. You know, there's a strong stigma uh, in the industry and, you know, just across the mental health sphere of people, you know, having a negative um, feeling about uh, expressing, you know, need for help. Um, and especially in the workplace, in the construction workplace, there can be a fear of ramifications for um, saying that they're not, you know, well um, in a mental capacity, you know, people tend to look at that differently rather than, you know, um, equating it as a valid health concern, you know, the same as, you know, a, a broken wrist, um, you know, you wouldn't keep going to work every day with a broken wrist and not get that addressed. In addition, leadership may be lacking training in dealing with mental health and suicide risk issues in the workplace. So CFMA members, CFMA member companies love to get involved. What can companies do to help address this critical issue? Well, the first thing is awareness. Awareness is absolutely key. As people struggle with mental health issues or suicidal thoughts, it may actually present as a performance issue in the workplace. And the person may also start retreating from their normal interactions with others. It's really important that companies learn to identify and assist those in need and that would be paramount to them having a successful program. Companies can use a lot of resources that are readily available to them through CFMA and through the Construction Industry Alliance for Suicide Prevention. If they just start on those two resources, um, you know, they'll find a plethora of things available to them. There's a needs analysis and integration checklist that companies can use with their leadership team to see how prepared they are to deal with suicide prevention and mental health in the workplace. And that actually also offers a lot of tips on starting to integrate a mental health and suicide prevention program in along with your other health and safety programs. It's something that companies really want to fully integrate. It really needs to be like bolted in versus just slapped on, um, you know, so that it's an ongoing and successful program. And then the other thing too, CFMA has so many webinars. I know there's a September webinar coming up and local chapters are having either webinars or live programming through Suicide Prevention Month in September. So definitely take advantage of those resources as well. The other thing is companies just need to do something. Establishing and integrating the program can seem really overwhelming, but it's better to start small and just do something rather than doing nothing. On the Construction Industry Alliance for Suicide Prevention page, there's a pledge to stand up for suicide prevention and our resources are built around that acronym. So it's keeping employees safe, providing training, creating awareness, normalizing the topic of suicide prevention and mental health and decreasing the risk of death by suicide in the construction industry. There's also videos, articles, other collateral resources to support your program as you put it in place. There's toolbox talks, posters, wallet cards, hard hat stickers, and other screening tools. Again, just start with something small, get the conversation going. Above all, companies need to create a caring culture. I think if companies have a genuine concern for their employees, it will create the buy-in and the use of their resources, and this will ultimately save lives. So companies can review their policies to ensure they don't prohibit employees from asking for help or that they think there's gonna be a consequence for asking for help. They can also train their supervisors on HR related issues, especially around this topic, and then educate their employees on the programs that they already have available, um, such as EAP, company sponsored training, and definitely provide access and knowledge about suicide crisis resources. And then they also need to integrate the company's attention to mental health during their employee orientation and onboarding but I think at the end of the day, you need to see your employees as a whole person. It's no longer good enough just to get our employees home safely. We need to get them back to work safely too. 
That's a lot of great information for our members and for their companies to to take away and to to start implementing. Like you said, something small is better than nothing at all. And a lot of times it just takes that one small step and it really just starts snowballing into more more opportunities, more activity and, you know, a a greater a, a greater effort. For sure. And I think too, you know, especially with Suicide Prevention Month being around the corner, the um, companies who have taken the pledge to stand up will be getting a resource kit. Um, Like I said, it just, it starts the conversation going. And now a word from our sponsor. Profit Software centralizes all your financial data, including ERP, CRM, HR, estimating, and project management for a complete view of company performance. Contact Profix to learn how we can help better manage your project's cash forecasting, RIP reporting, margin fade, and equipment utilization. Quickly switching topics here, um, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Well, it wasn't really a direct piece of advice, but growing up, I watched how my parents were with people and, um, you know, basically everybody they knew and especially the people that they managed in their workplace. So they just were very caring and respectful people, and they definitely valued each member of their team for the role that they played in the overall success of the business. And I carried this into my own life and my leadership style. I remember a line foreman thanking me for being so nice to everyone on the shop floor years ago. And it really meant so much that he noticed that. But more importantly, I just told him that without all of us, we're nothing. And yes, there may be a business hierarchy and, you know, somebody has to be the boss and somebody has to be the worker bee. But if we don't have people making the product or, you know, building on our construction site, there's nothing for the others to do that are in the support or the administrative roles. So bottom line, I guess my my advice was really value the contributions that everyone on the team makes. That is perfect. You know, the, the sum is greater than each individual. For sure. What advice do you have uh, for someone new to the industry? Well, I know we're on a CFMA podcast, but (laughs) I mean, definitely um, my biggest advice would be to join CFMA, especially if you're already in a financial management role. So of course, I know this is a CFMA podcast, but my advice would definitely be to join CFMA, especially if you're already in a financial management role and take advantage of the educational offerings. There's so much content and you know, not just for yourself, engage your staff for sessions that are appropriate for them, especially things like the CFMA Academy and take them to meetings, let them get involved. The CFMA membership fee is such a small investment in the development of your staff, not just for their education, but their feeling of engagement as well. And I'd say too, like you have to connect with other members um, and get to know your peers, whether it's joining your local chapter and attending meetings, um, getting involved on a committee, and then eventually attending national conferences, maybe eventually even get involved with the national committee. Definitely don't be a magazine member like I was for so many years. I've gotten so much out, but I could have had it so much sooner if I had just engaged sooner. You know, the other thing too, is just that the real value of CFMA is the connection to all the knowledge that their members have. And most of us who have been longtime members will truly attest to this. We can reach out for, you know, anything that we need to bounce off of somebody else. If we're working in another state, we can get information that we need. And beyond that, we've made so many great friendships along the way. So like I said, the value is, is really well-rounded from a professional and a personal level. Well, that's all really great takeaways for any of our new members. So new members, listen up, get involved, you know, find that supportive company that's going to going to bring you into the CFMA fold. And you may end up one day just like Tracy here, you know, being interviewed because you've you've managed to take advantage of not only the uh, Building Profits magazine, but everything CFMA has to offer. For sure. And like I said, you know, I know it's kind of a cliche, you get more out of it than what you put in, but you know, it really is true with CFMA. That's awesome. Well, Tracy, I wanted to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to come sit down and talk with me about this. I had a wonderful time learning more about why we need to be as involved as possible in suicide prevention and, you know, wanted to say thank you for sharing your, your wisdom. Thanks so much, Kate. It was a pleasure.
Thanks for listening. If you're looking to learn more about suicide prevention and CFMA, check out cfma.org forward slash suicide prevention. Make sure to join us next month when I sit down with another member of the CFMA Association and chat with them about their experiences. If you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe and share on social media. And if you're interested in learning more about the Construction Financial Management Association, check out cfma.org.